Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the M53 M55, the Tier 9 American SPG. This one's located on the north spawn of Prokhorovka, and it's under the command of a fingernail clipping. And we've got a double header for you featuring the M53 M55 and then the FB304. Game on! It's an 8 inch howitzer, 203mm, it's a very powerful gun and it's mounted on top of the hull that would have belonged to an M47, a Patton tank, so it's basically a medium tank in weight and size and it's 48 tonnes in total. Now it looks like fingernail clipping is going to use the railway line position to actually shoot at the enemy and he's lined up his first shot for the approach to the rock which is right at the end of that position on the south side of the map. Oh, he's aiming actually for his own side there. <laughs> I hope he doesn't shoot his own teammates. But the first enemy that comes into sight is a Super Conqueror and he's using the rock in the center. So we're lining up a shot on him as he retreats, pulls back. So we can see how far he goes forward and how far he goes back every time he uh, shoots and you can see there fingernail clipping relocating to avoid counter battery very important on this map this map is known for counter battery i've been counter battery quite a few times in fact the last time i played this map i was counter battery yes i was surprised as you might think as well but it did happen Yes, yeah, so it does sometimes occur. Okay, well, the Super Conqueror has come back. And we know that he's going to pull back, but not a huge amount. Not fully dialed in there. One of the really good things about this RT is that it's got a very wide arc of fire. 60 degrees in total. 30 degrees either side of the center line. Which means that when you're adjusting to hit the target, you've got quite a long way that you can actually move. Uh, without getting too much reticule bloom you will get some of course but it's not quite as much as if you actually have to move the vehicle and up there he just moved the vehicle you see to to get a better center of arc he's looking at his mini map and saying i need to be covering that area of the map if i'm going to get shots on target now if he was going to aim for the top of the hill he'd have to change the arc altogether and move the vehicle and that would mean dialing in all over again but he's got several targets he can shoot on the south field including the super conqueror a skoda t56 and the cs52 this another direct hit 403 this time now it's 900 alpha 52 millimeters of pen 10.5 meters burst radius which is quite big and between 12 and a half to 28 seconds of stun which means this RT can stun a lot of enemy tanks if they're close together and keep them stunned whilst you earn masses of stun assist from your teammates so it does help if you mark your targets to say that's the one I'm going to stun next so that they can actually either attack it the moment it's hit by you and stunned by you and that's why I tend to mark the targets both before and after I shoot. Because I'm trying to tell my teammates, that's the one I'm going to hit next. And as soon as I've hit it, I say, can you put the shells in now because I need the stun assist. Oh, unfortunately, um, Skoda rammed us. I don't think he meant to. Accidental. Now, the standard reload for this RT is 40.27 seconds. We can see here fingernail clipping's got it down to 31.48, which is quite a substantial reduction. About nine seconds, just under nine seconds in total. Okay. It's one of the favorite RTs as well for another reason, because actually it's very mobile. 56.3 kilometers an hour. And because of that mass as well, you can actually ram enemy tanks if they ever get too close get a move on go towards them and ram them i've seen uh, steve walst of honest gaming do some pretty unusual things with 
his one, his M53, which he calls Night Pig. And yes, he actually has ram killed enemy medium tanks with his uh, RT. If you don't believe me, there's a video on YouTube at this moment, stream shenanigans, and he actually does ram an enemy tank with an M53, M55. And he mentions at the time, he said, I don't think the guy expected that to happen. Now, of course, the M55, which is this version with the 8-inch howitzer, was actually used by the US Army between 1952 and 1960. They were also used by Belgium, Turkey, Spain, West Germany, and the Republic of China, which is Taiwan. And that's a direct hit! Wow, he's got a big one. Now, I suspect the ones for Taiwan are probably in storage and ready to be used if and when. Hopefully that if and when never happens, but you know what the Taiwanese are like. They are likely to keep all of their weapons ready for use if they need them. Okay, he's relocated over to the other side now. It's slightly safe from, the, from this area because there's more trees to hide behind. One of the enemy goes down. We've got an M103 up here. Very low hit points. Rounds out. Oh, he got him! He's killed him. A direct hit. And given the amount of hit points that he got off the Super Conqueror, I suspect he just overwhelmed that M103 and took him out of the game. So his first kill... Now, the M55 with the 8-inch howitzer was used by the US Army. The M53, though, is the one with the 155mm gun, and that was used by the US Marine Corps. Rounds out. Just alongside, but it tracked him. And he's changing position. Yes, you can drive over here, you see, and loads of trees and bushes that you can hide behind, but... Yes, you can hide right in the corner with this one and keep moving about and the enemy can't get at you. They they can't see you. But they aren't actually getting quite a long way to the south on or to the to the north, I should say, on the east side of the map. At the moment, T fifty five A has come down off the hill and our object seven oh four is relocating in the corner. Now he's hoping that an enemy's going to become visible at the back of the map. I think he was looking for Tracer more than anything else. The enemy RT in this game is a GW Tiger, which is actually quite large, quite slow. And if he does become visible, he probably would get taken out fairly quickly. Okay, CS-52 lists, backing up. Rounds out. Went long. Wasn't fully dialed in, but he did give it a good go. You can see he's got two marks of excellence, so he's obviously played this a lot. But he hasn't actually applied any camo to this M55. And he really ought to, because it does help. It gives you a little edge. It's a few more meters before you get spotted. Any, any old camo will do. In fact, we do actually have a skin for this vehicle, which was very kindly made by Jasmine. And uh, unfortunately, she's no longer with us, but we still keep the skins and we still remember um, Jazz. So it, it would be nice, actually, if uh, if you need that one, I, it, we do have it available. But um, I'm pretty certain that any of the camouflages would do. And you can see there's a lot of knocked trees down in that area. And I think that's why he's thinking that the enemy RT is in that corner. Okay, we've got an indication of target there. Somebody was asking, oh, it's the E5 is asking for us to fire at the 7032. So, obviously, normally, when I get a request like that, I do respond, try and target the, the, um, the tank that the 
our teammates want. There we go. There he is. Mark the target and rounds out. Oh, solid hit. 262, though. Not much. But when an E5 like that contacts you and says, can you hit that one for us, please? And they actually get a response. They actually feel that they're getting cooperation and support from their teammates. Those who are reading chat, though, will actually see quite a few uh, indications on the chat uh, page showing that I am actually responding, trying to tell them what I'm going to be doing next, telling them when my next shell will be loaded and getting ready to uh, fire. You can see here a number of enemy tanks at the center line, but there's one in particular, a Samur SM, has come to the north and he's actually threatening to come over the railway line which is another reason why fingernail clipping is actually moving further and further west on the map. He wants to get to the tree line so that he's protected if that guy should come over. Got a couple of tanks moving over there, a BZ-176 and an M3Y. I think they're going to try and protect themselves, but they might start receiving artillery shells. So we'll have to watch those and see if the artillery strike circles actually appear on that side of the map okay there's the 703 again he changes course as he pulls back but he actually meant to do that 469 i'm better hit that time on the side of the vehicle now watch the railway line at the north oh well the m3y just got wiped out by the gw tiger on the enemy team as you can see the circle has appeared on that spot so what they're doing is they're proxy spotting our teammates on the other side of the railway line and the RT on the enemy team is then responding and placing rounds on top of their heads. Okay, we're trying to get a shot on the Skoda. Unfortunately, all he gets is some stun. The enemy is trying to box us in at the moment. They've got control of three quarters of the map and they're trying to push us into the other quarter the t125's gone into the bowl which is not a very good move so we're trying to damage the super conqueror next he's threatening him notice how he hot held down the right hand mouse key there to, so he could look at uh, over at the other targets and decided to come back and hold his aim on the spot super has gone missing again and things are not going well. We're now three down on the enemy. And the Samur is over the railway line. He's actually now in the dip on the other side of the railway line. Okay, so the Super Conks appeared. Lines it up. Rounds out. Direct hit again, 424. He's racked up quite a lot of damage, 2,675. But his teammates keep disappearing. And now he's... We're down by five, and there's only five left on our team, and that's the two-minute warning. This is not looking good, because the enemy could still come up with a good move. They could push. He's knocking trees down to provide him with a bit of extra cover. That sometimes can attract the attention of that GW Tiger. Although I suspect at this moment, he is busily trying to... Uh, take out our tanks instead yes he's trying to go after our e5 who's having the difficult time and we've just lost another one an stb this time only four left well the e5 claims his target which was a leopard one And the Super Conqueror is trying to move in on him. Just got a hit. And the RT is trying to hit him as well. Fingernail clipping at this moment is focusing on any enemy that might appear at that ridgeline. Tree just went down. Somebody's there. Probably the Samur. Could be the Skoda. All those trees he knocked down. Well, he fires a shell in. And I don't think he was spotted. No, he wasn't spotted. He's right up against the edge of the map, so there's nowhere he can go. And the E4 is coming on. 
Because he knows the RT's here. He just can't see exactly where. Okay. Now we have to move. And he's coming in for the ram. But of course he can't fire behind. But his teammates can. And the Skoda takes the kill unfortunately. And that was the end of the game. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the third class tanker for fingernail clipping in the M53 M55. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 10, and he got a gorse medal for doing more damage, exceeding eight times the hit points of his own vehicle. And that means he was pumping out those shells as fast as he could, and he was collecting damage, but his teammates just kept dying around him. His win eight at the end was 4,003, and he was the last teammate on his team left alive at the end so that's super unicum standard and a bit more but let's have a look at team score and see where he was well we can see the highest damage in the game actually went to the Samoa sm on the enemy team he got a high caliber and confederate for 5008 hit points of damage second highest damage went to yes fingernail with 3918 and the third highest damage, well, that went to Object 704 on our team with 3,241. So some players were actually working as intended. The M53, M55, the Object 704, and our Heshbarn, the FV4005, yep, they were working as intended, did a lot of damage. But uh, I'm afraid when it came to the enemy team, they were doing better. Their RT, the GW Tiger, managed to pick up a Confederate. And the Super Conqueror got a steel wall in that game as well. So they were really rocking it. When it came to kills, we can see the high scorer was the Samoa SM. Again, five kills to him. Three kills went to the Skoda T56. And of course, he claimed us as well. And two kills went to the Heshbarn, the E5, and the M103 on our team. And we can see that uh, Fingernail only got the one kill, the M103. When it came to base XP... He's the top of the table with 430, but I'm afraid the enemy team did much better. And the Samoa SM got 1,531. The BZ-176 got 1,226. They were the only two on the enemy team who managed to get over 1,000 base. But the third highest was the T-124 with 924. And their RT way down here was 737. He fired 16 rounds. So, yes... He did do well to fire that many rounds out, but he still had four rounds spare, spare at the end of the game. He got eight direct hits on the enemy, but none of them actually penetrated, but he did get 16 splash as well. 3,918 hit points, of which 3,445 were at more than 300 meters. The closest shot was on the E4 of the enemy team, as he got very, very close indeed. But he didn't get spotted when he shotgunned the guy at close range. Two hits received. Both penetrations. The last one was fatal, I'm afraid. Seven enemy vehicles damage, one killed. So there's a six difference there, but we didn't get a Confederate. The enemy team must have done better. We also didn't get any stun assist. Our teammates weren't shooting the tanks. And that might be because they weren't being told which tanks to shoot at by our uh, indications. I always say using the T key actually does tell your teammates which tanks you want them to shoot or to disable so you can then hit them. And he did cause 10 stuns, but nobody actually managed to get any stun assist for him. On the credit side, huh, on a free-to-play account, he actually made a loss of 17,369 credits, or 59 credits, I should say. Um, and that's, I'm afraid, even with a courageous resistance because he picked up the course medal. So not very good. Even if he'd had the premium account, he still would have made a loss on this game. And when it came to base XP, well, it is positive, 691, but it's very, very small. And again, he got the Courageous Resistance Award because, of course, he managed to get a medal, even though some of his teammates didn't. So um, first battle over, uh, it was a long battle. It almost went down to the wire. It was in the last minute. But he couldn't hold out any longer simply because there was too many enemy tanks he was up against. Uh, and even if he did actually get behind the E4, which was funny because, of course, the E4 can't turn its turret all the way around. And at that point, the E4 was kind of blocked from shooting him again. But the Skoda could hit him and took him out of the game. 
So in the end, it worked out that, yes, he wasn't going to survive very long. So the second battle, I did promise you an FB304 battle, the Burt. So let's have a look at it. And here's the second battle. We're on the north spawn of Overlord in the FB304. Game on. Well, our teammate is in the M44. He's sticking around. But it looks like Fingernail Clipping is going to go down to the south and try and get shots on the enemy. No, he's decided he's going to stay up in the field and shoot from over the bunker at the enemy who goes to the bowl. This could be interesting because from this position, I managed to get the fastest kill in one game by shooting at an enemy who was on the north side of the bowl, but he went to the rock and I aimed a shell directly at the rock. Five, my first shell impacted the vehicle, blew him up and got the quickest kill in the game. I think it's on one of my videos. And yes, it is a Burt game. So if you want to watch it, uh, go to my playlist and look for a video with the FE304 on the Overlord map and you'll find it. Okay, we've got a Type 64 coming across the middle. Oh, that was a penetrating shot. 423. It's a 4.5 inch howitzer, capable of 450 alpha, 28 millimeters of pin with a 2.2 meters burst radius. That shell hit a Type 64, which has very thin armor, and he got a penetrating shot. Standard reload, 12.94 seconds. And we can see here that Fingernails got it down to 10.12. It's not quite as fast as the Fifi, but it's still very powerful. Oh, he's got another one. Another penetrating shot. This could get very expensive for the enemy if he keeps slotting these guys. Okay, he's looking for where they might be. We do have um, a Type 64 on the enemy team. The one he hit has actually got right to the edge, but we've got a Crusader nearby. Now you can see that uh, Fingernail Clipping is actually aiming um, quite a way, long way to the south. He's trying to check all the bushes where the guy might be hiding. The Type 64 did go... Where did he go? He's actually moved. He's moving up and down the bowl trying to spot us but now he's got a t 3485 facing off against him the crusader moved a little further down ah okay we've got a baguette the britan panther which is basically a panther by another name and he gets another direct hit the baguette is actually uh more like the uh vk rather than the vk 3002m more than a um uh, an actual panther, which is a tier 7. If you ever look at the stats and compare them to the other panthers, such as the uh, the poodle, you can actually see that they are very similar. It's firing another one in there. Bit snap, that one. But he's trying to get this guy, the other bird on the enemy team, and he's lining it up. I hope that bird doesn't move too far. Rounds out. Here we go. Yes, he gets a hit. And he got the assist there. Because he tracked him. Now that enemy bird wants to get our hide. But we're firing in. Ooh, getting very close as well. He really, really does want to kill us. But he's going to find it difficult. Now, the Type 64. We're lining up on him. Okay. There. Rounds out. Another good shot, 153. You just need to get your eye in. Sometimes it's just a matter of lining the shot up and praying almost. And he gets the kill. Beautifully done. And it looks like the Burt also went down and he was taken out by the Crusader. We're now going for the Budgie. Rounds out. Another hit. A good one as well because that guy's low on hit points and he's killed immediately by the Hellcat. The next one is another Type 64, just the other side of the bowl. He's taking a lot of damage by one of our teammates. I 
and he's out the game. That's a direct hit and a penetrating shot for 381. This is turning out to be a really good game for Fingernail. Going for the Thunderbolt. Lots of extra armor on that thing. Makes it a bit more difficult to kill. Because, of course, the it's only two point... Um, it's only 28 millimeters of armor, but the thing is you're doing more damage by explosion. The ex explosives are actually doing more to it. Because the explosions, when they happen against the hull, they seek the weakest point, and that's where they tend to do the most damage. KV-1S, still got a lot of health. Lines up the next one, and another hit. He's pricking him to death, shot by shot. Death by a thousand cuts. Lines up the next one, and... Another solid hit, makes him a one-shot. Come on, you can do it. Get the kill. It'll be your third one. He's loaded. And that's a kill. Three kills now. He's having an excellent game. Can he make it four with the Thunderbolt? Come on, you can do it. Lines it up. Just misses. Oh, and the Hellcat steals that one away. There's not many enemies left. They've only got two. A heavy tank and a medium. And the medium is a T-3485. He just hit the guy on the barrel. That's going to affect his shooting. And he's pulled back into cover because his gun's not working anymore. Okay, we need to change position really if we're going to get some shots. But there's the T-3485. And it's the M version, which of course is the premium. Just missed him there. Both RT are focusing now on the T-34. We can't hit the VK-3601 because he's behind the house. If we're going to get shots on him, we'd have to move over to the other side. And that's what he's doing. He's trying to get to a better position. Doesn't, get it, doesn't want to get seen by the 3601 though. He's trying to find the best lineup. Okay, there he is. He's got him lined up, but he's now got to dial in. He's only got one more chance. Oh! But it was on target. He missed out on the kill. That went to the Crusader, but now it's the T-3485M's turn. And he's losing hit points rapidly. We're not in range, so we're trying to get as close as we can before he, the game ends. And he's gone, and that is the end of the game. And it's a good one. Three marks of excellence. Well, when you have battles like that, I think you can see why a fingernail clipping has three marks of excellence on the barrel of his FB304. He is so good in this little tank. It's very easy to have a lot of fun because it's so light and it moves about so quickly. But it also has that great little howitzer, which is very accurate as well, uh, because, of course, it's the same how it's so you find on the Bishop and also on the Crusader SP as a stock gun. In actual fact, that 4.5 inch how it's never existed on these vehicles, but it's fun in the game, put it that way. That was another ace tanker for a fingernail clipping in the Burt. He managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he got 17. He got a high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game. And on top of that, he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight from that one, 6,355, which is super unicum and a bit more. Let's have a look at team score and see where he was. Well, the highest damage was 2,344 hit points. The next highest was the Jackson on his own team with 2,213. So he did have stiff composition, but only from his own team in this one. And the third highest damage, well, that went to the Thunderbolt with 1,660. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those as well. Three kills went to Fingernail. Two kills went to the Jackson, the Hellcat, the Type 64 on his own team, and the Crusader on his team. And only two players on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill and that was their baguette and their VK3601H and yes when it came to base XP he's missed out on this occasion to the Jackson oh dear two out of three in this one 
869 went to the Jackson, 856 went to uh, fingernail clipping. So tiny, tiny difference. And 731 went to the Hellcat on his team. He fired only 30 rounds. Well, this Artie actually has 75 rounds of ammunition, so he hardly even used half his ammo. Um, 15 direct hits on the enemy. Three of those were penetrating shots and 14 splashes. Well, can we tell which ones he actually penetrated? I'm pretty sure we can, actually. The Type 64 obviously took a penetration because it was a big hit. 381 hit points off that one. The enemy FE304 didn't take a penetrating shot, funnily enough. But the Type 64, the other one on the team, took two penetrations. 650 hit points. That means all of his damage was done by, yes, fingernail clipping. And he was taken out of the game. So incredibly well done in that one. Uh, did the baguette? No, he didn't do the baguette or the Nashorn. And I don't think he would do any of the others because they're just too heavy on the hull armor. So yes, there's the two tanks that he penetrated or three tanks that he penetrated. He actually got uh, 14 splashes as well. 2,344 hit points of damage, of which 1,229 were at more than 300 meters. So some of those shots on the Type 64 and the Burt were actually at close range. Nine enemy vehicles were damaged, three were killed. So there's the Confederate, 1, uh, 176 hit points of damage assist. No stun assist, of course, because it's under the 150 or 150 millimeter uh, um, caliber. He also picked up a profit on a free-to-play account of 53,553 credits. And he also got 856 base XP. Uh, there's no multiplier down there either. But what a great battle. It's When you see battles like that, you become encouraged to go out there and do it yourself and say, yeah, I can do what fingernail clipping does. But yeah, he does it with more aplomb because he's got those three marks of excellence on the barrel. And I know there are members on... What are team nibs who do have three marks on their Roberts? And they generally, they, they do the same as fingernail clipping. They absolutely pulverize the enemy with this little tank. So if you enjoyed those two replays, the first one with the M53, M55, where he was the last man standing on his team. And then this one where he really excelled in the FB304. Please give the video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.